Ever wonder why actors say break a leg instead of good luck? Or why Macbeth is supposedly cursed? Or why it's bad luck to whistle in a theater? For the month of March, I'll be looking at stories behind common superstitions and symbols of luck. I'm your host, Emily Prokop, and this is the story behind theater superstitions. But first, a quick message. If you're listening to this, you know how awesome you are for listening to podcasts, right? You get to be that friend who starts sentences with, hey, I heard on a podcast. One out of five people listen to podcasts every month. That means while you're the cool one, four of your friends, well, aren't as cool as you. But you have the power to help them. Be a good friend and suggest a podcast. For the month of March, hundreds of podcasts from NPR, StuffYouShouldKnow.com, and indie podcasts alike are putting out a challenge to listeners to introduce their friends to podcasts. And as much as I'd love it if you recommended the story behind, it might not be up everyone's alley. But there are plenty of shows to choose from, like The Epic Film Guys or The Countdown Movie and TV Reviews for movie and TV lovers. Everyone has a podcast or the Ultra Podcast for those who like comedy and music. Odd Dad Out and Off in the Weeds for those who like funny takes on news and pop culture. Home Gadget Geeks for those who like gadgets and technology. The Endless Knot and Myth Take for those who like history or the humanities. Whatever you decide to suggest to your friends, tweet about it using the hashtag tripod. That's T-R-Y-P-O-D, as in try a podcast. I'll be using the hashtag all month to talk about some of my favorites as well. Some of the most superstitious people are said to be those working in the theater. On top of the general nerves of being on stage, any number of things could go wrong during a live performance. So, with all the nervousness, why would wishing someone good luck be considered unlucky? And, contrarily, why would you wish someone well by telling them to break a leg? The phrase break a leg has more than a dozen different origin stories, actually. The first, and most commonly believed, is that wishing someone good luck is like beckoning evil spirits to target that person. It's similar to why people knock on wood after saying something that could be considered gloating. People believe evil spirits lurk, just waiting for someone to get too cocky about something, just to bring them down. So when someone says break a leg, the evil spirits are thought to hear that and think that their work is done. Two other theories come from the wording itself. One is that the German phrase used in World War I for happy landing literally translated into English as, may you break all your bones, but that's unsubstantiated. And another from Shakespearean times has break a leg as a colloquialism for bowing at the knee, meaning you're wishing the actor such a great show that he is obligated to take a bow at the end. Other origin stories include stomping instead of clapping in Greece, which may cause an audience member to break their leg. Or in Elizabethan times, the audience would supposedly stomp the chairs, possibly causing a leg to break. One of my favorites, though, comes from the idea that it came from understudies who secretly wish an actor would break their leg so they could get a chance to play the lead. And honestly, if you're an understudy and you put the time and effort into learning the blocking and lines for the lead, you might not have very nice thoughts about the person playing that part. One more supposed origin of this phrase comes from when Abraham Lincoln was shot at Ford's Theater in 1865 by John Wilkes Booth who was said to have jumped off the upper box seat and literally broke his leg. Speaking of Lincoln's assassination and theater superstitions, one commonly held belief was that Lincoln was seeing Macbeth when he was shot, leading people to assume that's why the play is supposedly cursed. But he was actually seeing our American cousin. But there is a rumor that could possibly be true, that Abraham Lincoln read the play the night before he was killed, which is quite possible since it was his favorite play. But that doesn't let Macbeth, or the Scottish play, or the Bard's play, as actors refer to it, off the hook for being cursed. When the play was first performed around 1606, there was a heavy belief in the supernatural and a fear of witchcraft. So when Shakespeare started off the play with three witches foretelling the tragedy that was to come, Many thought he had written real incantations used by witches, therefore cursing the play by invoking evil spirits. And supposedly during its first performance, the actor who was supposed to play Lady Macbeth died suddenly, and William Shakespeare had to replace him at the last minute. 
And yes, I said him because back in Elizabethan England, women weren't allowed to be actors and female parts were all played by men. But this theory is difficult to prove since there are no actual records of the original cast of this performance. But Macbeth is associated with more than just weird happenstance. At least two instances with onstage fighting resulted in the actual deaths of actors. One in the 17th century when the stage dagger used to kill King Duncan was replaced with a real one. And another in 1947 when Harold Norman, who was a staunch non-believer in superstition, died on stage while playing Macbeth during the stage battle. In 1937, Sir Laurence Olivier was nearly killed when a weight fell from the rafters, and Peter O'Toole nearly drove off a cliff in 1980 when he was rehearsing for the role. One theater superstition actually has some factual elements to it, and that's the superstition of whistling in a theater being bad luck. In the 1600s, riggings of theaters were similar to that of ships, and naturally, out-of-work sailors were able to find jobs backstage. While at sea, sailors would communicate with one another using whistles, which then translated to them whistling to signal lowering or raising of sets, lights, or curtains. If you've ever been around an actor, especially one who loves musical theater, you know it doesn't take much for them to start singing a song. So when an actor backstage would casually stroll whistling a tune, they may not have realized they were sending instructions for raising or lowering stage pieces that could hurt them or someone else. Even though now stagehands have wireless headsets to communicate backstage, the tradition of not whistling continues and turned into a superstition. Information for this episode was sourced from History.com, The Washington Post, Playbill.com, and more links, which can be found in the show notes at thestorybehindpodcast.com. Follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at StoryBehindPod, or subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you'll never miss an episode. Thanks for listening. <laughs>